Doctor Who, a British icon once lost the time in the cutthroat world of television. Inventive antagonist with deeper meaning, reduced to a joke. One of the greatest science fiction inventions ever, turned into a way of describing a cupboard which is slightly bigger than expected. A show that was loved by many, but sadly not enough, with the BBC letting the show rest with no hope of regeneration. Being a Doctor Who fan as the 20th century drew to a close must have been tough with no new episodes. Spare a failed revival in the form of the Paul McGann TV movie and numerous strange animations. It must have felt like there was no hope of hearing the blue box's unmistakable sound of ancient engines wheezing and groaning ever again. Now in 2019, it's hard to imagine a time without Doctor Who, the latest series proving popular among critics and fans alike, paired with a range of merchandise from books to action figures and even clothing. Doctor Who is talked about by loads of people every day, and the anticipation for the next series, and the next, and even the next, is ever growing. Doctor Who seems to be the show that since being woken up is determined to never sleep. The fact Doctor Who is a show that has been talked about over half a century since its first episode, proves it to be as strong as ever. However, this wouldn't have been possible after the cancellation in 1989 if it wasn't for the revival. This is the unlikely story of a gritty northern actor, a pop singer, and a Welsh writer working with a crew of fantastic people to bring the Time Lord back to our televisions. This is the story of how Doctor Who came back. Louise Hellam's graphic design team were responsible for creating a new logo for 21st Century Doctor Who. The designs were created with the thought of many not knowing about Doctor Who at all. Many designs were considered. Eventually, two designs that were considered as favourites were combined to create the iconic 2005 Doctor Who logo. The logo was announced to the world on the 18th of October 2004. On the 20th of October 2004, the documentary series Doctor Who Confidential was announced. The series would document the behind the scenes of the new series with interviews and footage while looking back at the show's past. It was this show, paired with the books used to research this video series, that inspired me and many others to love media and television in general. The logo of Confidential was revealed on the 25th of February 2005 and it looked great. With the final touches being added to later episodes and much of the work completed, it was time to showcase a glimpse at all the hard work so far in a new trailer. Now the first official teaser trailer was released as part of BBC One's Winter Highlights presentation on the 2nd of December 2004, showing the TARDIS dematerialising with some teaser text. This was soon followed by a theatrical trailer and subsequently posted on the internet by the BBC. A media blitz including billboards and posters across the UK started early March 2005, with television trailers started showing up on the 8th of March, and radio advertisements started two weeks before the series premiere, and ran until the second episode aired. The official Doctor Who website was launched with exclusive content such as games and new Ninth Doctor information. Just like any series of Doctor Who, there is always a selfish someone ready to release data, details, or even an entire episode before numerous contracts. The BBC and the production crew want to. During the production of the 2005 series, an image of the new Dalek was leaked to the tabloids and internet during November 2004. This was a fairly large blow, but it was to get worse, when on Monday the 7th of March 2005, the first episode of the series, titled Rose, was leaked onto the internet. A quote from the BBC months later revealed the leak originated from CBC. After a thorough investigation by BBC Worldwide's Canadian broadcast partner, the source of the leak of episode 1 of the new Doctor Who series has been traced to a third party company in Canada, which had an early preview copy for legitimate purposes. The individual responsible for the leak has had their employment terminated by that company as a result. 
The leaks were sad news, however it was dealt with and the anticipation for the new series of Doctor Who was still strong. On the 8th of March 2005, the BBC launched a website for the new series with the address www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Doctor Who. The design was based on various sizes of hexagonal graphics, with flash based animated page banners and homepage, which featured a countdown clock counting down to the broadcast of Rose. The new site was designed by Lee Binding and Clayton Hickman. Because the new site used a large amount of flash based animation and sounds, there was a second non flash version running in tandem for web users who didn't have flash enabled internet browsers. The two versions of the site were identical in content, but the animation removed and replaced with images and text the homepage being where the biggest differences occurred. A link back to the old BBC cult website was labelled The Classic Series. An in-universe website was set up on the 25th of March 2005 with the address whoisdoctorwho.co.uk. This website was the one that would be used in episode 1, Rose, built by the character Clive Finch. In the build-up to the series, the stars behind the show's revival appeared on numerous television shows to discuss the new series and promote it to potential viewers. The main interviews were... Christopher Eccleston on BBC Breakfast on the 9th of March 2005. Christopher Eccleston on Newsnight on the 9th of March 2005. Russell T Davies on BBC Breakfast on the 11th of March 2005. Billy Piper on Parkinson on the 19th of March 2005. Christopher Eccleston on Blue Peter on the 21st of March 2005. A large number of cast and crew on Radio 2 show Project 2 on the 22nd of March 2005. And finally, Christopher Eccleston on Friday Night with Jonathan Ross on the 25th of March 2005. Each interview showed the thoughts of the actors, the showrunners, and the themes the series was trying to capture. On the 10th of March 2005, Phase 1 of the press pack was released this provided information on the series as well as interviews and the outline for the build-up towards the series. Another seven phases were released as the series progressed. To mark the launch on BBC One of the new Doctor Who series, BBC Two celebrated one of British television's much-loved and truly iconic series in a special night of programmes on Saturday the 19th of March 2005. In a one-off Mastermind Doctor Who special, four Doctor Who fans were put through their paces by Mastermind host John Humphreys to find out who will be crowned the UK's top Doctor Who fan. The prize was then presented by the new Doctor, Christopher Eccleston. The Story of Doctor Who this was a nostalgic archive documentary looking at the show's past. This was also broadcast. Well now, BBC One hurtles through space and time. Come with us for the trip of a lifetime. Aliens, you have been warned. Christopher Eccleston is the new Doctor Who. Here we are, after over a decade without a new episode of regular Doctor Who, and after so much hard work by everyone from actors, writers, cameramen, graphic designers, concept artists, effects artists, and many more, it was time. On the 26th of March 2005, after a program titled A New Dimension provided an insight into the series at 5.25pm, then at 7pm on BBC One, the first episode of the Doctor Who revival titled Rose was first broadcast. In some regions, the first few minutes of the original BBC broadcast featured the accidental mixing of a few seconds of sound from Graham Norton hosting Strictly Dance Fever. Other than this, the show went off without a hitch. I was sat down on the living room floor, my parents on the sofa. As that title sequence started, I was in awe and didn't look away from that TV for the whole 45 minutes. Now, I was only four years old at the time, but it was enough to get me started. It lit the fire of interest in Doctor Who that has never been extinguished since. Like me that night, a new generation of Doctor Who fans have been created. Rose received consolidated ratings of 10.81 million views, making it the third highest for BBC One that week and seventh for across all channels. The opening episode was the highest rated episode of the first series. Now the first episode received many great reviews, with fans of all ages over the moon with the revival of the show. It was a hit. So much so that the BBC's head of drama, Jane Tranter, confirmed on the 30th of March 2005 that there would be a festive Christmas special that year, as well as commissioning a second series. With a second series in the pipeline, the majority of the main cast and crew were gearing up for more work on the show. However, on Thursday the 31st of March 2005, the news broke that Christopher Eccleston would not be returning as the Doctor. An initial statement issued by the BBC said Eccleston feared being typecast and had found the series gruelling. Although, 
the BBC later accepted the statement was not correct, and said they had not even spoken to Eccleston before releasing it. This caused a great deal of controversy, and the real reason behind Eccleston's departure is still rumoured to this day. Now, the new Doctor stepped into Eccleston's shoes during the final minutes of episode 13, titled The Parting of the Ways. The new Doctor was revealed to be Casanova's David Tennant. Now, the way I see it, Christopher Eccleston's performance was extraordinary, and as an actor, he decided to move on and was well within reason to, only to be contracted for one series. I hope one day he returns to the series, but for now, he will always be the Doctor that brought Doctor Who back and introduced me and many others to the show that is loved by millions worldwide. The series was ultimately a huge success, with large viewing figures, happy fans and new fans watching. Critics praise rolling in and awards including BAFTAs for Best Drama Series, as well as Best Costume, Makeup and Photography Direction. Other awards included NTAs for Most Popular Drama and the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form for Stephen Moffat's two-parter The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. The success of the series led to the release of merchandise like Doctor Who action figures, which character options created as well as a variety of other Doctor Who merchandise such as money boxes and working sonic screwdrivers. The figures started with the Dalek Battle Packs, a remote controlled pair of Daleks with either a Ninth Doctor or Rose Tyler action figure. Character options then began releasing various character figures. Books were then released by great authors including the new series adventure story books and informative books like Monsters and Villains. These books were great at the time and I must have been just admiring the pictures, but as time went on I learnt more and more about the classic series as well. This was greatly down to Justin Richards' books. Now I remember writing him a letter as part of a school project, I even have a signed reply to this day. So all this praise, all this merchandise being sold, all the great views, the great critics reception, the awards, the series couldn't have gone down any better. Doctor Who truly was back. So, that was the story of Doctor Who's 2005 revival. 14 years on, we owe a lot to the cast and crew of the series, but look how far the show has come. Many Doctors, Companions, Monsters and Adventures later, it all comes back to that evening in late March 2005. The influence the series had on pop culture, places and people is incredible, and the way the series had continued to this day, breaking down boundaries and planting its place in pop culture and the very soul of Britain, shows how important that first series really was for Doctor Who in the 21st century. 2005 was the year Doctor Who came back, and it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 